Hello there and welcome. Uh, my name is Jimmy Wiekman and in this video we're going to take a look at something very interesting and that is the possibility to replace co uh, components in your Geo software projects with Compass components. So what does that mean and why would you want to do that? Well, there are many reasons for it and one of the reasons is that Compass is an amazing tool to actually keep track of your different uh, applications, your different code bases and stuff like that. And it will actually take components into being some kind of supercharged categorization. So rather than having it like a fancy label, this one will actually now provide value to your projects. But before we uh, get too into what Compass is and how you can use it, let's jump into the article that was published in the Atlassian community and see what they are saying about it. So here we are now in the uh, Atlassian community and the article was written by Katie, Katie Silver. And what they are offering here now then is the ability then to basically replace your components with the Compass components. And a component in Compass is, like they are saying here, it is a standalone piece of software that requires an owner. So it's a service, a library, application, data model, anything you can link uh, along those lines. So this one means that we can now get a little bit of ownership and we can take uh, advantage now of the services uh, aspect if you have your service management. So this one is kind of interesting um, because instead of having, like I said in the beginning here, then having basically a fancy label that you can assign to someone, you will now have something that will actually provide a ton of value. So they have a too long didn't read here. So what you can do is, is tagging uh, different issues with compass components instead of regular components. And then you can use all the information that you have from compass in that one. So you can have your tiers, you can have your ownership, you can have your uh, stakeholder lists and all kinds of things that you can have there. And you will also have all the metrics, like when did we deploy code, what kind of incidents do we have related to this one and so on. So it will actually take your um, crappy component label thingies and make it really, really useful. Now this is a change that is completely vo you, you can do that if you want. It's completely optional. You don't have to do it, and if you don't do it, nothing bad will happen, even if you have Compass installed. So the way you can do it is manually, you can select it from each of your projects, and you can then uh, connect different services and applications and so on to your project. And this one is very simple to do, and I will have a separate video for Compass for showing you how to do this. But once you have done this, you will now have, instead of just having your regular com uh, components show up in the list when you want to select something, you can now also select Compass components. And this one, like I said, will enhance the usability or the usage of uh, labeling your different issues. So then you can actually connect things into Compass, which is a really, really good thing. So let's take a little bit of a look for this one. You have a very long, um, some background here and who can access things like that. And I think if you are interested in this one, you should dig deep into what Compass is if you don't already know it. So understanding, like for example, what kind of, of usage you have, what kind of uh, user levels exist within Compass. And then it also, a little bit, what does it mean for me in your software and how this one actually looks like. And so if you go into your uh, Geo Software project today, you will find that you have, if you have Compass, sorry, I should probably mention that, if you have Compass, you will see this one. You will have a new drop-down list here that says Year Components. And you can now uh, do a quick switch for this one. So if you want to use this one, the only thing that you need to do then is to switch this little uh, toggle here. And what will happen then is that you will now uh, use uh, the Compass components rather than your regular ones. And you can switch this back and forth as you see fit. So if you don't like to use the Compass components, if you think that one did not fit your need, then you can switch this one back and your old components will still be there. And if you look at uh, how this one will look in the ticket itself, you will see the regular component here. And you probably recognize that this is not uh, what the component tend to look like. You used to just have the label here, but this one is now connected to a service. Uh, so you have the service icon here. 
And you will also see then, uh, when you have here, you will see all the components related here. And you will see also different scorecard dependencies and connected issues. So this one will be more informative than what your regular components will be. And you can also see then that uh, Compass components work won't work in automations at the moment. It's good that you know that. So if you're working with a lot of automations based on your components, you have to wait a little bit uh, because they are fixing this one. And they are saying expect this fix to be somewhere around April. Uh, so I wouldn't count on them before May. So this is uh, something that they are working on. And once you have uh, selected that you want to have these Compass components, uh, then you uh, might need to just reload the page. Uh, so just wait a little bit uh, while this one propagates through your system and then refresh it a couple of times and then you should have it there. I'd like to say here, there's no risk of data loss if you want to try it and then you decide you don't want to use it. And they are also uh, improving a little bit on the roadmap here. So you can have site-wide opt-in or opt-out toggle. So then we can have it for an entire site. And this can be, uh, I'm guessing this one would then be that rather than opting in, you can now opt out instead if you have it turned on. And also they have more ways to link comp Compass components to your projects for project admins. Uh, so this is also good, more statistics probably, and also more ways to manage this one. Uh, so this one will be interesting to keep tracks on. And also the ability to import existing year components directly into Compass. So if you have already a set of components and you don't feel that it's very fun to, uh, to manually add them then to Compass, then you will have an import version for it. But I think that this change uh, is very good and I will give you some videos later on on Compass so you can see why this is a good thing because right now we, we only have like a few images here that shows basically this view but once you click into a, a Compass component you will have a ton of information there and if you also set up basic automations for it like uh, incident management or your build scripts and stuff like that you will have a ton of great information related to your code and to your application. But this one I will show in a later video because I haven't had time to actually set this one up and in a demo setup it's kind of difficult to, to set up all the integrations um, to make this meaningful. So I need to tweak it a little bit and so you have to wait for that one. But I'm curious to see uh, those of you who are using Compass, uh, how great do you think this is? And for those of you who don't have Compass, are you curious to see what this one would look like? And would this uh, change make you want to go over? Do you feel inspired now to check out Compass and see exactly what kind of information do we get in a Compass component and see how that one can enhance your own situation or your own uh, overview of what you're building? So sign off in the comments and tell me also what kind of information you would like to learn more about regarding this topic and so I can create videos for it. So this was all I had for this video today. Uh, so until next time, I guess the only thing remains for me to say is that I hope that you have an awesome day and a great week.